Good evening. Good evening. Um, another Christmas is with us. Another Christmas, and there has not been justice for Daphne yet. Another Christmas without closure for a family in mourning. A family that is living the mourning in a dignified manner. Relentless in its quest to bring justice, both for Daphne and for an ailing nation. Another Christmas without closure for a country that is mourning. In sharp contrast to Daphne's family, it is a nation that wants to ignore, wants to ignore the mourning and pretend that all is hunky-dory. A nation that is oblivious to the fact that behind the glitz and glamour, the rot is settling in. A nation that is fast spiraling downward into darkness. Road deaths, deaths on construction sites, femicide, immigrants exploited and beaten, brawls, these are all becoming the order of the day. Chaos reigns supreme. The corruption and the culture of impunity is in the higher strata of our society, has well and truly not just trickled down, but cascaded down through the different levels. We can no longer pretend that the corruption of high officials is far away from us and does not affect us because we are living the consequences, breeding them and suffocating in them in our daily lives. These are sad times indeed. The country needs closure over the horrible assassination of Daphne. The country needs to begin to heal. While acknowledging the sadness of our reality, a sadness which is even heavier when juxtaposed with the merriment of Christmas, I want my message today to also focus on what is positive. Not the fake positivity that social media bombards us with, but on a positivity which is growthful. My message is focusing on the positive, because even when the heaviness and darkness threaten to become overwhelming, I do experience hope. Most times, it is the genuineness and simplicity of the people I meet in my work. People who show me that it is still possible to love in suffering, to move away from self-absorption and understand the suffering of the other, and to rise above fear and do what is right, because other people matter. And on a bigger scale, hope is what I experience right here in my monthly appointment on the 16th in the square. It is an appointment which I make time for in my busy schedule. It is an obligation towards the memory of Daphne, towards her family, towards Malta, towards our children and towards myself. And so today, I want my reflection to be an exercise in gratitude. Gratitude for the people who bring me hope in the turmoil we are living in. I truly believe that practicing gratitude is a way of healthy connection. Connection with ourselves, the other and the moment. And genuine gratitude is a powerful tool for healing. I would just like to quote an extract which I really like by Melody Beattie. Gratitude turns what we have into enough and more. It turns denial into acceptance, chaos into order, confusion into clarity. It makes sense of our past, brings peace for today and creates a vision for tomorrow. All the things we need. Um, we need to get out of our denial, we need order in the chaos, we need clarity in the confusion. We need a vision for tomorrow, and this is what hope gives me.
So today, I would like to invite each and every one of us, one of you, to join me in celebrating what we do have right here with us. And while doing it, tap into an internal strength within each and every one of us, a strength that can help us be steadfast in our fight for justice. It is a simple exercise in saying thank you. First of all, I would like to express gratitude to each and every one of you here in the square. I come here feeling disillusioned and sometimes hopeless. And then I meet you, other people who, like me, believe it is worth spending an hour of our time commemorating a woman who put her heart and soul into fighting for justice. And I know that I am not alone in my values, because each and every one of us is here to be counted. We are in this together. Our vo and together, our voice sounds louder, and our light shines stronger. From the bottom of my heart, thank you. Your presence makes me believe in the world again. You give me hope. Needless to say, my gratitude goes to Robert Aquilina, Alessandra, Manuel, and the rest of the team. You are an inspiration to me. I am in awe of your perseverance and your courage in living the hard decision of being on the forefront. I want to celebrate you. I see you grow in wisdom, integrity, determination, and generos generosity as you lead us in this journey. You make it possible for us to meet every month, and you remind us not to give up. You are role models that this country needs so badly. Thank you. You give me hope. To the ladies of Occupy Justice, a big thank you too. You show us what women can do when we get together. Your creativity and pluck and your determination to keep the cause of justice alive on the national agenda fill me with admiration. Yes, we are women. We will not stand back and watch corrupt individuals steal our nation and our freedom from us. We are women. We will, act, we will be actively engaged in the healing of our country. Occupy justice, you give me hope. Lastly, my gratitude goes to Daphne's family. Mr. and Mrs. Vella, thank you for bringing up Mr. and Mrs. Vella, thank you for bringing up a woman with the insight, the values, and the courage to give such an important contribution to Malta. To Daphne's husband, children, sisters, and nieces, thank you for supporting her and for sharing her with us. I know that your generosity meant you pay the high price with her death. And I want, I want you to know that we appreciate it and will never take your loss lightly. That is why we are here. Thank you for persisting in spreading her message, both locally and internationally. You give me hope. Yes, with gratitude comes hope. Hope that we will live in a, into, we will live into a freer, better, and more just Malta. Because we are standing up together for what is rightly ours, we will reclaim our country. My hope this Christmas is that more people will see the light. A cliche, wishful thinking, or maybe not. May because we are here together month after month, peacefully and firmly passing on our message. We are forced to be reckoned with. We cannot be ignored. 
May our presence challenge more and more people to shed the veil of denial that blurs vision and acknowledge the truth of the situation of our nation. To have the courage to do some serious soul searching and ask how they themselves might be, might be contributing to this chaos. To move away from self-absorption and take their rightful place in society, one in which they are giving a constructive and healthy contribution. To have the courage to rise above their fears and to take a stand. Thank you all for who you are. And from the bottom of my heart, I wish you peace this Christmas.